Oh, this is going to be a dope episode. I'm very excited. Uh, I am likewise excited. Yeah, it was fun. You know, n- normally we don't uh, we don't record an episode on Tuesday morning. Uh, so doing that today was actually kind of a nice treat because I, I woke up this morning and then, of course, I had this conversation going on with somebody on TikTok. And if anybody is following me on TikTok, you'll recognize the conversation because there's currently four videos in response to to this individual. And that just kind of got me going through the stuff. Um, and then we ended up in a conversation this morning for episode 21 of season six, which we recorded live. That was a lot of fun. Um, and now we're here. And I feel like I'm just I feel like I'm tripping balls. That's that's how I feel. And and the reason is because, frankly, I'm just super intent on where I am right now. And all of the environmental factors that go with where I am right now, it's not that I have to think about anything, but there is certainly a lot of shit going through the stream. Um, and so it's, it's awesome because we have this episode right now, which we are recording uh, as a dualistic unity social. And then after this, we have our call-in show, which is a mixture of a Q&A and a call-in show. So any any questions that we receive before the call-in show, we're going to try and uh, answer during the call-in show. Or if you want to call in during the call-in show and ask your question or share a story or share an insight or anything like that, you can do that too. You can also weigh in on questions that we've already answered. Give us your perspective. So it's a lot of fun. I love this new series. It's it's uh, it's definitely something I look forward to. But I noticed that we have a lot of, few, of people in the audience right now. So I'll stop here, pass it over to Andrew, and say thank you all for joining us today. Yes, thank you very much for uh, for tuning in. Great to have you here, even though I can't see you. It's it's fun always to uh, to just chat <laughs> and just. Sink into what you're doing, take in everything that's going on right now, see, you know, reality less so about something that you're trying to solve or figure out or accomplish and just something that you have the opportunity to experience and be involved in and not with this. It's not that you don't go places and get places, but just with less in need to do so because of some underlying assumption that you're making that you know that some situation is going to be better or make you more or make you less or fear that you're going to be less or hope that you're more if it goes a certain way or this way or that way. Like all of these different ways that we can sort of just, just not fully pay attention right now, just not fully be involved in the reality of what's happening right now. Because as soon as there's a reason for it, as soon as you're improving or downgrading because of it, it's like, you don't want to, you don't want to experience that as much if you feel like your, your, your values dropping in a certain situation. It's like you look ahead, oh, things will things will get better, you know, uh, this, this too shall pass sort of thing. And then if you're involved in it, or if you're thinking that it's improving you, it's almost like anticipatory excitement, like, oh, this process right now is improving me. So like you're involved in it definitely, but there's also, you know, it's diminishing it a little bit because you think, that it means something about you. And there's going to be a point where you are more improved than you are right now. And we can go, it's like, you can go back and forth on this, or, you know, you can let go of, of both of them, or even, even the assumption that you're on some sort of journey, that there's something that you have to overcome in order to something, something, something. As opposed to like we were talking about on that episode, like just being a thing and a a thing that's constantly changing and yet, you know, is never changing value, never changing, like as you go through things. But as long as you're feeling, you know, like there's somewhere else and you've even that you've been somewhere else that you've been that you are more improved now than you are 
back then, you know, there's right away, you're on some sort of journey or path, and that's going to inform the way that you live and the things that you do and the things that you focus on, just because you're assuming that even that you know where you're at right now, or there's a way to know, because there's <laughs> even assuming that there's a way to know, it's like, you can't do that. You can't do that either. And there's a way, like, there was some sort of way I wanted to finish that, but it's gone, so I'm going to stop. Which is perfect. Isn't that nice? I really do like that about the entirety of this conversation, that the whole reason we feel like we need to get to some end point, even in what we're saying, is because we think it reflects on us one way or another. Like, you can go through a whole thing and then just leave it. You know, this is why creativity is such a, be a beautiful skill, right? It's because you can do something, whether it's a painting or, um, you know, maybe you're doing some pottery or you're sketchbooking or you're making some music or whatever it might be, and then just give up about halfway through and go, yeah, you know what? I, I'm, I can do that a different way. Or I had a different idea entirely, right? Because you don't have to make it about the end result, but about the expression, because that is how you, in fact, Learn more about what you're expressing, right? And how to express it over your lifetime. But it's just that. It's just doing it. Now, I wanted to get into this because somebody was asking, Andrew, are you okay? You seem sad. <laughs> Sorry if that comes across as insensitive. And I wanted to discuss this a bit because there is this period where it's not, it's not sadness necessarily. But it's almost like disillusion with something that you had invested in for for so long and so heavily that you're kind of left with this well what now and that in itself seems rather daunting because you want to think about it rather than just let it play out and so from my perspective i think andrew's going through a lot of that and the reason i say that is because that's something that i have gone through and i've talked to other people who have gone through relatively similar experiences always the result of disillusion of just ah, now what and it doesn't necessarily have to be the dissolution of a spiritual path or a dissolution of your ego it could be just the end of of a career right or or the end of your marriage or any major change then you're still left with that same feeling of well well now what right and it's not sadness per se but it is definitely a certain level of neutrality so I was just wondering if you'd like to talk about that a little bit. Oh, absolutely. Happy to. And yeah, to, uh, to clear things up in terms of the sadness, it is, it is feeling all sorts of things, but mostly relaxed and like not really knowing in a sense what to do with just like being relaxed and they're not being, you know, not being a journey. There's nowhere to get. I've been I've been pulled by, you know, this idea that there's somewhere to get something, some next thing my entire life. You know, like there's some way to make myself more than I've been. There's some process that I've been on over the last, you know, 15 years. And so I was a teenager and felt super insecure. And I've been going on this this journey towards becoming my, you know, highest self or fucking whatever. And I think it can be very very ad addictive in a sense to continue to do that. Very addictive. It's, it's incredibly because there's, there is this assumption that I can know how I'm doing. And so for me recently, you know, there was this assumption sort of that I was on this side of a journey that was like, I had improved a lot. And as much as it put me at odds with, you know, previous versions of myself because of, you know, say how I felt like I was doing things on social media or posting a video and, you know, getting responses like, you know, oh, this, this helped. Thanks a lot. Blah, blah, blah. Like I felt like I was doing good in the world. And it's not to say, I'm not saying like it was or wasn't. And like, I'm sure someone will comment something like you've been doing great the whole time, but I thought it meant something about me. I thought it made me 
more and that I was doing something like if I come up with a video and express something in a certain way and share it out there, it's like I'm helping someone else not feel as down. And there was a way that I then felt like good about myself. It was a way that I used to feel good about myself. And it was, it was very much involved in, again, something else we talked about on this last episode. And I figured we'd just carry into this one is like this sense that there's some control in that, that if I just say things the right way or express things the right way, then, you know, I, I can help someone else assuming that I'm doing something, assuming that I'm the one having the impact instead of them just taking in a message from this, you know, person expressing something and making the most of it, doing what they can with it only because they're in a spot that they resonate with it. But all I'm doing is sharing something. And it it was very much in a lot of ways for other people, like things I would express videos I would make, like I wouldn't even fully take them in myself. I saw the value in expressing it over taking it in and actually living it, actually embodying it, actually even just reflecting on it. It was like, how quick can I put it out there? Cause it, cause it meant something. And so that's kind of how I started to, to see myself was that instead of taking it in, I, I re recently in the last couple of weeks, maybe got a clearer look and again, this isn't even it. This isn't even it. But I got a clearer look at how I was seeing myself and how I, and it's just, again, regardless of my own perceptions, it was this assumption that I had improved throughout my life, just in, in base that I was more improved now than I was previously in my life. And when I realized it kind of, it's almost like it hit me that I wasn't, that I've always just been me doing my best, sharing things as best I can, responding to my environment as best I can. But I had never been more or less than anyone. And I had never been more or less than a previous version of myself. As that started to hit, it's like I felt like I was relying on all these things in order to feel better. And in a lot of ways, I was just left with myself right now, not focusing on something outside of what's going on, just really taking in my behaviors, really taking in my response to reality, not my assumptions about why I'm responding in that way, or how I'm responding, or what I'm doing, and trying to have some just grasping for some certainty over how I'm doing now. And because I wasn't maybe focusing on as many things to feel better, but I still wanted to know how I was doing, I started to assume that I was doing worse because I wasn't using so much to feel better. It's like I had let go of that, but then the reasons that I was trying to feel better, I was still feeling in a lot of ways because I assumed that there was something wrong with those sorts of responses to things. And so I think in the last couple of weeks and even just maybe not that anything ended or anything got up was gotten over, but more recently I've, I've realized that I wasn't, you know, backsliding at all that I wasn't, it was just that I still thought that I was on some sort of journey, some sort of road and overcoming something instead of just being here. I'm just, sitting here talking into a microphone like there's not necessarily a thing i'm going to say that's going to make me more there's not a thing i'm going to say that's going to make me less there's not a response that i can get or a thing that i can do in the whole wide world it's going to make me more than i am right now i may improve at stuff i may give something time and attention and you know i'll post a video doing you know learn how to play guitar or something i'll post one then i'll post one a month or two later and you're like you're improved and i'm like no I've, i'm better at guitar it doesn't mean i'm better as a person like andrew's never gotten better or worse you've never gotten better or worse as a human being but that means that you're also not better or worse than anyone 
right now and everyone's same level playing field and every iteration of yourself, every habit that you've had, every tendency that you've had, everything that you've done, every way that you've failed or succeeded also never meant anything about you. It also didn't mean that you're higher or lower than you were then based on where you assume you are now, but that also means that there's not a way to get better. And so there may be a lot of things that you're doing right now that you're, you start to realize like, holy shit, I've been doing these things because I've been trying to get better. I assume that if I do this, I'm, it's going to make me more. And like, if it's not going to make me more then fuck, why am I doing that? And then, you know, there can be sort of like a spiral from that and all, cause you start to see all the ways that you have assumed that something made you more or that, you know, you thought that it made you more and you can maybe feel shitty about certain things or you feel sort of down about certain things, but it's all, that's all still, you know, focused on that meaning something about you as opposed to them still being experiences and you still just, you know, being what you are right now, having never improved at anything as anything in, in your whole life. Well said. Absolutely. We had a, a question here. Uh, when will you guys have another meetup? Uh, the next one is actually happening in April. I will throw the QR code up here. It's on April 11th. We are going to be meeting in California uh, near Big Bear Lake. If you haven't checked out the details for this mini retreat yet, do check them out. We still have just a few tickets left, actually. They're, they're going rather quickly, and we still have about a month left, so I expect we're going to sell out rather soon. Uh, so if you are thinking about coming, definitely do. We have a few single bunks left as well as a king bed on the top floor, which is going to be dope. It's in a shared room with four other single beds, all of which are dope people who have been to previous retreats. So it's going to be quite the fucking party in that room. Uh, it's a cannabis friendly event. So definitely keep that in mind if you are deciding to come and check out the podcast. Or if you haven't already listened to the podcast, definitely check out the podcast. Dualistic Unity, you can find it on any podcast platform. Uh, we have these talks five days a week, at least. And the podcast is really all about this stuff. So that was pretty much it. I just wanted to cover that quickly. And then we have a follow up question. And I thought this was great. Thanks, Andrew. Uh, thanks for Andrew answering. Andrew, wish you well on your journey. Where do you see your creativity going now based on what you're speaking about? Oh, that has actually been something I've been wondering a lot about, too, because I I don't really know, but there's definitely a lot more there, like when I do sit and, and think about stuff, because really, and this has been going for everything, even just in the last, I don't know, day or two, like if there's no way to improve, like there's nothing you can do to be better or be worse like it's like everything every way of acting every way of making a video every way of you know doing something or saying something is kind of back on the table in a sense because there isn't a direction to life you know life doesn't actually have a direction as much as we've tried to create one as much as we've assumed that there's like no there's a way that society works and you do this and then this happens and you do this and this happens and then you do this and then you achieve some happiness and then you, you know, realize that maybe it wasn't actually happiness. And then most people have crises, you know, around middle age and, but they just, you know, push through or maybe they make a change and then you know, they get to a point where they're, they can't really do a whole lot anymore and they hopefully have enough money and then they just kind of die. Like that's, that's, that's the line, right? And there's variations of that. I'm not certainly not saying that's uh absolute but a lot of you know at least through my life that was kind of general general assumption and so if that's the case then there's and the reason for it to be the case is to do the safe thing like do fit in do what everyone else is doing it's not just what you're doing it's how you're living it's how you act it's the things you you focus on the conversations that you have the the ways, the directions that you take things, the things that you are willing to bring up or talk about or share, or, you know, even just the, the hesitation, because if there's a right way to act, 
and there's a goal to a situation or, you know, you want people to like you, it's like, holy shit, that's going to cut you off a lot, a lot. There's going to be a lot taken off the table because you're not going to want to push those bounds as much. And so I think if there isn't, then, you know, you can take anything, any which way there doesn't have to be, you know, this, this reason or point or like, you know, tie something up with a bow and a ribbon or completeness to an interaction or a conversation or a video or anything that you produce. And I think that's where, you know, a fuckload of ideas and creativity come from when you're not holding yourself back, when you're not bounding up, you know, well, I have certain goals and I have certain wants and I have assumptions about how to get those wants. And so therefore I can only do these things because these things may detract from that, not realizing that maybe, you know, the authentic way of something going was, you know, like this and you're like, well, can't dip. So I'm going to fight there. And you just like kind of even out the line instead of it being sort of this natural progression. And so, yeah, I think there's a lot more creativity on the table in terms of like what I do with with videos and whatnot. I have honestly, I have no idea, but there's a lot more on the table. It's going to be probably a combo of a lot of <laughs> a lot of different stuff. But right now, yeah, not really sure. <laughs> that's awesome. I think that's the nice thing about creativity. It's just another word of saying expression. So the more you allow yourself to be yourself, the more there is to express. And so you find different ways of doing so. So I thought that was a great answer. Uh, I got one here. Ray, how did you come to know that you're everything and everyone? I didn't. There was just a recognition that I wasn't Ray. And so it's all that remains. Because no matter what I think, it always just comes back to, to what I think I am. And if I'm never that, then I'm what remains, which is what is. And it's just, are you willing to accept that? And, and again, you could say that you're accepting it or it's the process of, of being accepted. It's really good conversation as a whole. So I appreciate the question. Um, this kind of follows up. Do you all believe in improvement or responsibility or change? How does this fit into the truth that you are and there's nothing to be conflicted about? I don't believe in any of those things. Those are all just concepts. The reality is, is here, just pay attention. And then all of those words take on a different meaning, right? But when you're looking at those words as somebody who's doing it, it takes a different meaning, right? So if you believe in improvement and responsibility and change, there is a you that is believing in these things to have a result wherein you become more or you change who you are. Whereas just pay attention. And all of a sudden you realize that your responsibility is your response and that change is just synonymous with you, the reality of you, right? There's nothing to believe in and improvement is not something that can be done as you're already everything. So the only thing you can do is go through the cycles of familiarity, right? Just become more familiar and all of a sudden you experience different variations of what could be done down a certain path, but that has nothing to do with improvement because you are never changing or becoming more, you're already everything. You got to follow up here on the uh, restream side. Uh, well, it was maybe a combo sort of, how can you be more of yourself under up your belief? And then transcending me and your body is also common uh, concepts, yet you're defending that. You think your body is a concept? That's a really interesting take. And that's the point, though, is that to look at this as an illusion really just, just comes down to one's own need to escape the reality. It's all it is, because this is reality. This is reality. And you could say, well, this is duality. Right. What is being perceived dualistically? Unity. So unity and duality go hand in hand. This is the experience of unity. It's not a concept and it's not an illusion. It's not a dream, okay? though you can look at it that way. 
But then you have to ask yourself, what is real? Right? Well, the dream of reality, the dream of, of the universe, whatever, you, there's a dream of existence, is reality. That's the point, is that it's reality experiencing itself. It couldn't be more real. So your body isn't an illusion, nor is it a concept, because you don't have to be thinking about your body to be experiencing it. This is the dualistic perspective of a unified whole, a division between the observer and the observed on infinite different scales. This isn't something to escape. This is the gift. The suffering that you're experiencing, though, by virtue of your irresponsibility, is something that you are trying to escape rather than cease exacerbating. And I think that that's really the important thing to remember is that this is real. It's not divided in the perception in the way that we perceive it to be, but it's the definition of real in that it's you and you are existence. And there will never be an experience of yourself that isn't dualistic because the very self that is trying to experience something is a part of that du of that duality. There's the experiencer and the experienced. And in unity, the unity that non-dualists tend to focus on, there's no experiencer. So there's no experience. There's no perception. There's no division. It's just as much a, a product of trying to escape self-imposed misery as a Christian believing in heaven after death. There have been quite a few follow-ups, but I can I can respond to this last thread. I'll just read them here. You don't. Uh, you keep saying I'm suffering like you don't. Yes, I suffer. Everyone does. Our suffering, our ego, our dualistic thoughts. Okay, man, have a convo with me. So we're we're talking about suffering a bit recently too and just like can we mention quickly that yeah. there's a q a episode after this where we will actually have call it so if you would like to stick around and be on an episode of dualistic unity you can be for up to 10 minutes there's a little timer and everything just to make sure that you're not getting carried away as this is the individual that i was talking about getting carried away in my dms earlier today uh as well as the track record of ongoing messages that is in the religion and spirituality section of our discord so if you'd like to get this off your chest do participate in the q a episode after this uh it's going to be on the same channel it starts at 6 p.m eastern time yes fuck yeah definitely definitely join that if you can because those are a lot of fun and we can chat we can talk we can have a back and forth and actually a uh a conversation um it's just a conversation, man. Like we're not, we're not trying to like put on some sort of show. It's just like, it's the best we can do in terms of conversation. But when it comes to the suffering, like this idea that it's like having the perspective that the duality isn't actually it. And like the suffering ends with the letting go of some perception. Like it's still all very much conceptual but there's also this idea that there's an experience that doesn't include suffering as opposed to you just being reality right now like not the you that you're thinking about but the you you right now like isn't to say there isn't going to be things that you experience like components of your experience but it's just how much are you focused on believing that shouldn't be happening either and like assuming that there's a point in which you're free of what discomfort because you focus on that and you try and get there and you're going to be very uncomfortable the entire time and always constantly striving and on some sort of path of getting somewhere else never really being involved what's going on or a denial of what's actually happening right now or a denial of your influence on what's happening now as well what's that this is a fun conversation because here's here's the kicker 
duality is not unity. That's what this is. Uh, and uh, and again, you know, I want a private text debate. This isn't a debate. And if it's not worth having a conversation here, then why are you wasting my fucking time? Uh, and you're not entitled to my private time, frankly. I make myself available to everyone as often as I can. So if you'd like to have a conversation, let's have it, let's have it here. But here's a question for you. Because you seem to be implying that somehow duality is separate from unity in the same way that Christians believe that the earth and humanity is somehow separate from God. Um, and so everything is always everything. What is, is always what is. It's always the whole and complete self, regardless of how it's expressed. But expression, expression itself is a requirement or, or is an, a part of duality. Again, you cannot have unity expressed or experienced without there being the polar opposites that are perceived. You can't have a suffering without a joy or a joy without a suffering. And this is where this person's problem really comes in because they're experiencing shit tons of suffering. And that's their whole focus is the suffering. And so that's all they see, which is why they keep insisting you're suffering too. Whereas I'm saying, yeah, so. And so you see, the difference is, is that in your resistance to suffering, you suffer so much more. Whereas in my embracing of what I would commonly refer to as suffering, changes it. So it's no longer suffering. And that's the point. It's just another experience of me. But that's the point, is that you are biased due to your fixation on the very thing that you're trying to escape and making worse. Yeah, and I'm not even sure. <laughs> Listening, they're, they're going back. Oh, I wouldn't even try and keep track. I mean, they're yeah. just talking to themselves. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The whole time, for sure. Yeah. But it's an excellent opportunity to address some of this. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah. And like... <laughs> It's fascinating with even just with the idea of there being an enlightenment or a heaven or a point in which there isn't any suffering whatsoever, like completely contradicts like the fullness of experience, like the depth of the suffering, the how long the suffering lasts, a lot of it has to do with how much it means about you. And so guess what, motherfucker? If you're feeling all enlightened, if you're in heaven and you assume that something means something about you, if you're in unity experience or whatever your idea of that is, and you think something means something about you, which is gonna happen, but it doesn't have to, then immediately there's gonna be the potential for suffering. It's like we don't want to admit that we have influence over our experience. We want to assume that like someone else can take responsibility for us and end our suffering for us. Like there's going to be a place in which it ends. I'm going to, you know, follow the right thing, live the right life, listen to the right video or episode or person or anything and they're gonna end my suffering once and for all as opposed to just recognizing that right now no one can do it for you shit there goes my phone no one can do it for you like no one's ever gonna do it for you there's never gonna be a point in your life where someone's like i see you're suffering a lot let me let me pull some of that off of you just just take this pill, just take this drug, just believe this thing, just think this thing about yourself, just, you know, get enough ice baths, tell yourself enough positivity affirmations, tap your fucking forehead a bunch of times, say a bunch of prayers, do go to confession, go to church, go to mass, go to, you know, join this group, join this belief, join this thing. It's all something else and my suffering for me. Just believe the thing. Just let me convince you of this thing. Just agree with me. And then my suffering will end and you will bestow upon me the lack of suffering. And it's never going to be that. It's never going to be anything else. There's not going to be a thing that you follow, right way of acting, 
enough pats on the back, enough gold stars, enough medals, enough money, enough homes, enough cars, enough suits, enough anything in order to end the suffering that you're perpetuating by investing in there being a way to end your suffering outside of yourself, outside of just what is going on right now, outside of you. We don't want to take responsibility for our suffering. And if we think it's coming from something else outside of us because of someone else, it's not my responsibility, then there's going to be the need for someone else to, to solve it, to cure it, some other thing. And so we're on this track to finding that forever, you know, the quest for the end of suffering, not realizing that we're perpetuating it every step of the way. Exactly. I, I wanted to address this because there's been a, a shift uh, in the chat section in regarding the person who is making a lot of the comments here. Um, can we add them on video? We've said this previously, but I wanted to announce this one more time. We have a call-in show right after this. It starts at 6 p.m. Eastern time. Um, basically, we're going to answer some questions from the community, which some of, of which have been posted by Patreon members. Patreon members, if you'd like to make sure that your questions get addressed, go to the Patreon post right now and put those on there before we start at 6 p.m. Likewise, if there are any Discord comments, uh, we'll check that out. Actually, Andrew, do you mind posting something on Discord while I'm making this announcement? Just asking if people can uh, post a question as a response to your post. That'd be great. Uh, I will throw up the community Discord link in a second because I got to find the fucking thing. There it is. That is the community Discord link. You can join that. There is a massive group of people who are just basically having this conversation about the value of being themselves, the intrinsic value that lies in letting go of the idea that your value can be measured, and letting go of the idea that there is a, a way to compare value at all. And so it's a hell of a conversation. A lot of people have been there for a while. Uh, we really appreciate it. They do games nights, movie nights, all kinds of great shit. Uh, it really is a lot of fun. And shout out to Jazz, who has made the whole thing just a whole lot better. And we really appreciate that. But um, I have not been watching all of the comments section here just because there's there's quite a bit. Um, please just add me to the call. No, I get it. I, I, I understand. I, I'd like to chat with you, too. I look forward to it. Call in show. 6 p.m. Eastern time. Definitely check that out. But don't lose that enthusiasm because, you know, the conversation will likely not be comfortable. And it's just because there is this assumption you are misrepresenting what I am saying. And what I'm saying is that your bias makes it impossible to want to look at the fact that you're not being misrepresented at all. That, in fact, you're showing very clearly the very things that we are saying that you are showing and that you do not want to look at it because in order to do so, you would eventually have to give up on the path that you're so committed to, despite the fact that it hasn't been working. It hasn't been working. You're trying to deconstruct your suffering and get away from it. It keeps getting worse to the point where now you have to convince me to believe as you believe. And you even said as much. I'm like, you just want me to see things as you do. And you said, yeah. Why? Why do you need that so badly outside of the fact that it's not working? It's not working. And so like any believer in a path, you want other people to agree with you because it validates the path. But it's not working. And it's just that it's obvious when you give up on that strategy, when you give up on needing to get somewhere, give up on trying to escape your suffering. And I say this from experience. I really do. I went through a decade of self-loathing and hatred. You know, I was suicidal. There was all kinds of... If you haven't checked out the podcast, check out season one of the podcast. I'll talk about it there. The point is, is that I get it. And then one day I recognized, or rather the recognition happened, however you'd like to put it. Um, I'd just been carrying along this fiction because I assumed it was me. And I know when I brought this up earlier, you're like, you can't just let it down. That right there is the reason you continue to suffer. It's because you think you can't just put it down which is why you keep carrying it. That's up to you. It is entirely up to you. And there's complaints now about not giving this person a voice. And like, yeah, and is Levi threw in there. We got a call and show or call and show in, uh, in 20 minutes. So like, yeah, you do have the opportunity. Like 
how many podcasts even do like, you know, Colin shows and the, the round table stuff. And like, we have a free group on Wednesday at 6 PM Eastern time. Like you can join that. You don't even have to do anything. You can call in today, totally free. And like, that's as close as we can get. I can't necessarily invite you to like sit down next to me on a chair and talk, but it's as close as we can get. Like we're giving you a voice, dude. We're giving you a voice. You can, you can talk about things, but you know, it's like, cause I've done this plenty of times. Like I have things that I'm thinking about. You can't undo an illusion. You refuse to look at what the fuck is that half ass backwards pretzel gy mental gymnastics logic. It's like, you keep looking at it. You just said it's an illusion. What are you looking at? <laughs> uh, but I've done this plenty of times, you know, where, where I recognize something or realize something and I don't want to, you know, look at it really, or I don't want to think that I'm, I just want to avoid it or something. So I won't bring it up to Ray. <laughs> like he sees me going through stuff and, and whatnot, but I don't want to bring it up because it's not even like I know what he's going to say necessarily, but I know that if I'm holding on to something like it's going to be recognized, but it's, it's again, it's for, it's not, it's not for my own good, but it's, it's indicative of me being in a place that I don't want to even reconcile with being in. And like, dude, you're not on a, a journey. There's nothing, nothing you convince us of is going to set you free. Like nothing you get across or anything is going to do anything for you besides just dig you in to that journey. Cause who's next? Who's the next person you got to convince the next person who disagrees. You're just going to live your whole life trying to convince people who don't agree with you. I mean, you could, but I'll, uh, we'll be, we'll be here hanging out, living life. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And, it's, and this is a good question, actually. We're going to wrap up on this one, I think. What if we're unaware of what is in our present moment? The urge to conceptualize what's in your moment is what removes you from that moment, right? Like this idea, like, I need to know, stops you from the being the process of intelligence because you're trying to get to that end point which with, where in which you know instead of being the process of knowing, the ongo ongoing process of knowing something, which isn't to memorize in a conceptual sense, but knowing someone in the same way that you know yourself, right? And so um, I, I would say that when it comes to, to knowing the current present, the only way to do it is to just be in it. Right? And then that's to recognize it's always been you. It's always been you, regardless of the story that's on top. But we have 30 seconds left here. So I just want to make an announcement that we have the call-in show after this, which you can join totally free up to 10 minutes, you, but you got to agree that you're going to be on the podcast. There's a little form you got to fill in and go, yes, I agree. This is going to be on the podcast and I won't complain about it after the fact, which means it's an excellent exercise in responsibility. Just keep that in mind. If you're going to call in that you are in fact going to be putting yourself on display and after the fact, can't complain that you've been misrepresented when you've been putting yourself on display. I'm going to leave that for what it is. Uh, we're going to wrap up here. I'm going to pass it over to Andrew, but do join us on Patreon if you haven't already. We do these group chats five days a week, and tomorrow we have a free group Zoom, 6 p.m. Eastern time. We do that every week, and you can register at dualisticunity.com. Thanks for joining us, everyone. This is a lot of fun. Uh, sounds like they want to join, so... This should be fun. Uh, we will give you the link during the episode. I promise. Tune in. See you there. Bye, everyone.